Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials, I'll teach you Java using just the notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. In this tutorial, it's going to be an introduction to the socket server class and the socket class. Uh, the first thing we'll do is go ahead and crack open my website, javacjava.com, select Java Tutorials, and we'll scroll all the way down here to the server socket and socket intro. So the server socket and the socket class work hand in hand for providing communication links over TCP IP networks. In order to follow along with this tutorial, you will need just a basic understanding of how networks work. Now the best example of a TCP IP network is the internet. Now let's talk about this site, javacjava.com, for a moment. I have a virtual server from Amazon Web Services running uh, Windows Server 2012 R2. Now that server is assigned a public static IP address of 52.24.233.53, which AWS provides to me. Now it is running uh, Internet Information Services, IIS, which listens for incoming connections on port 80. Now, generally speaking, there are a maximum of 65,535 ports available to listen for incoming connections, although many of those are reserved for the o by the OS for various things. Now, on the other end of the connection is your computer. Your computer is connected to the Internet via a service provider that provided you with a gateway hardware that gets assigned a public IP address when it connects to their network. Now, when you connect your computer to the gateway via a network cable or wirelessly, your computer gets a local IP address. Now, when you open up your browser and browse to javacjava.com, a connection request is made to my server at uh, my server's IP address over port 80. Now, if, if you, you not always will you get a local IP address, if you're paying for a static IP address, you obviously know your networking stuff, and I don't need to tell you anything about that. Before I move on here, let's first thing, let's go out here to the command prompt, and um, if you don't have a shortcut to it, you can create one really fast by right-clicking, selecting new shortcut, CMD, next, and finish. It's just that easy. Let's open this up. So uh, let's use the ping utility, ping uh, javacjava.com, right? And you can see it comes back, and it's trying to send uh, some bytes, some packet data to 52.24.233.53, which is the IP address of my server, okay? So um, now let's go ahead and type in IP CONFIG, which is short for um, IP configuration. And so we'll hit enter on that. And so what I've got here is I'm looking for my IPv4 address, which is 10.0.0.183. Okay, this is going to come up in the uh, in the little demonstration here because I'm going to be running the server and the uh, client on the same machine, right? So you'll need to note what your IP address is there and change the program accordingly. Okay, so let's go ahead and, um, well, actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and just, uh, we'll just move straight. Well, I do have just a couple more things to talk about before we get started. So uh, server socket and socket classes. Now both classes implement auto-closable so we can use the try with resources type exception handling. Now I'm going to create a server program that listens for incoming requests over TCP port 4141 and that's just a RAM number I picked only because 41 is my favorite number. By the way, uh, to keep things simple, the server will simply respond to connection requests with a hello message. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. Let's just pop right over here and we'll do cd space backslash, takes us to the root. Uh, we'll do an md, make dir java, right? Uh, if, I already have that folder, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create it for you. Let's change directories to the java folder and I'm gonna make a directory here called uh, sockets, okay? Change directories to the sockets folder and I am going to notepad uh, server.java. We're gonna have a couple of files that we're gonna create here. So first one will be server.java, name of the source code file there. I'm just going to come over to my website, scroll down here, and highlight the server stuff, copy it. Make sure you're grabbing the server class stuff there. And let's just come over here and paste this, save it. All right, so we are importing the java.io package and the java.net package. And here's my main method entry point. I'm just displaying to the console, listening on port 4041, control C to stop. And now I'm doing my try with resources here for the server socket. So I'm creating a server socket variable here with lowercase s, right, of server socket type. 
setting that to a new server socket object. And I'm using the constructor. There's three constructors at the moment here in Java 8. Um, this particular one, you could just specify the port number that you want the server socket to listen on. So it's pretty straightforward on that, okay? Um, because I'm using try with resources, you'll notice uh, I don't have to do any like finally statement and do any close, you know, invoke any close methods or anything like that. And if you're not familiar with that, I highly recommend uh, watching my tutorial on the try with catch stuff there. Um, although actually the whole entire um, exception handling series there. But anyway, so what we're going to do, once we open up this server socket, it's listening on 4141. I've got this uh, infinite loop here. I'm just doing while true, right? And we are going to listen for um, something to connect, okay? So I create this, this socket reference variable of socket type, and um, I'm invoking the server socket, this reference variable up there. I'm invoking this accept method. And what this accept method does is when some when a program connects to 4141, um, it will then allow execution to go down the next line. Otherwise, this this line of code will sit here and it will be um, you know blocking. Right? You may think that I've got the uh, infinite loop in here to to kind of keep that going, but that's not the case at all. This line here <coughs> will block, but then I've got the infinite loop going because we want it to be able to con you know accept it. A socket connection do its thing and then disconnect and then accept another one and disconnect not have to rerun the server all the time and this will make a little more sense when I when we actually run it out there okay so the accept method will sit there and block in other words wait right for something to come in and then when we get a connection it'll display to the console got a connection so now we've got in the in the socket object there, right, we've got, uh, we can invoke the get output stream, okay? So the get output stream will actually take the, uh, it'll, it'll create, well, basically we're gonna, we're going to be writing out to the um, client that's connecting in, okay? So, and we're gonna use the print writer class to do so, okay? So I'm just doing a print writer, I'm doing out as a, uh, reference variable of type print writer, and we're getting the stream. And this true, um, this other parameter in true is set to auto flush. Normally when you would have to call like a, you know, invoke out dot flush, right? To actually flush any contents out of the, the print writer queue there. But uh, uh, basically we're going to use the, the print, the print writer has this print line method, which of course, you know, we're very, very familiar with the system dot out, but this is the print writer dot out print line. And this will display, this won't display anything on the server's end. This will actually send the, these, this data in packets over to the client that connects, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and come up here and, um, <clears throat> and save this. And let's go ahead and compile it. Java C server, okay. And let's go ahead and run it. Okay, so it's listening on port 4041, 4141, sorry, control C to stop. So what we're gonna do is I'm just going to take this, so I'm gonna minimize that, and I'm gonna open up another command prompt here, All right? Let's change, let's go to that same folder, and let's do a notepad client.java, okay? All right, let's pop back to the website here and take the client code here, copy that, paste that in there, and let's come up here and save. So the client, right, uh, main method entry point, it will do, does the try with resources again, and you'll notice we're using that same socket, right? And I'm using this S variable here, and I'm creating a new socket and the first parameter is the IP address of, that we want to connect to, right? And the second parameter is the um, is the uh, the port that we want to connect to. Okay, so 10.0.0.183, right, is my IP address here, and the other program is just sitting over there listening, obviously on this this um, same IP address here, right? Okay, and so once we connect, that will cause the 
we'll get to basically, once we connect, let me pull up the server.java, that will cause the success method to stop blocking and then it'll go ahead and do this stuff and write this out, okay? Now, um, coming back over to our other program here for the client there, right? We will basically use the buffered reader to get the input stream from the socket object here. And basically I'm doing, and you know, if, if you've watched my buffered reader tutorial, you'd be very familiar with what's going on here. If you haven't, I highly recommend you do that. But basically input will pull back the, the stream from that in a buffered reader object. And then we can invoke the read line method, which will read the information that comes over in um, from the stream from the socket that we open. And then basically the program will fall through and exit. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that. We'll move that down there. Uh, we'll bring back up this other DOS prompt here. We'll do Java C client, oh, uh, dot Java. Okay, and let's go ahead and clear our screen on this one here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in Java client, right? And you can see we got got a connection over here on our server and then we got hello from the, the server socket. If I hit the up arrow and then enter again, you know, I keep doing that, you can see how it's, how the client is talking to the server. Okay, so it's not very interesting because we're doing it on the same machine there. So um, what, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pop over here, I'm remote desktop into my Raspberry Pi and I've got my same program, the server program running on my Raspberry Pi, okay? So my Raspberry Pi's IP address um, is, well, it's actually up here, but I'll just go ahead and show you how to find it in case you're not, you know, remoted into it. So instead of IP config, you do IF config, it's Linux, and then enter on that. And so um, my Raspberry Pi isn't connected over the Ethernet, right? It is actually connected over my wireless network there, but I've got 10.0.0.35, so it's it's on the same local area network as that, so that's how you can find that. Let's go ahead and exit out of that, and I'm going to move my Raspberry Pi over here, and we're going to come back here, let's pull back, open the client, and that was 10.0.0.35, right? Let's come up and save that. Let's recompile. And let's go ahead and rerun that. <coughs> hmm, excuse me. Okay, so you can see over here on the Raspberry Pi, right? We got the connection. We got hello from the server socket. So there we are. So now we're, that makes it a little bit more interesting. Um, you know, I was thinking about putting this uh, this program there on my on my Java C Java, you know, and you could type in Java C Java dot com and or the IP address for. For, well, and then connect over port 4141 and it would display it there. But uh, I thought, you know, you guys kind of get the point at this. You guys get the idea at this point. So uh, that pretty much will do it. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. Minimize that. And I'm going to do control C to stop my server from connecting there and move that off the screen. And so I don't really have any final thoughts on this one. This is just, of course, just an introduction to there. There's a lot more to it than, than the server and socket server and socket stuff there as far as communications go. And I'll be going over those in a future tutorial there. I primarily wanted to do this one as part of the Java tutorials because over in my Raspberry Pi tutorials, I'm going to be using the... Uh, the Raspberry Pi as a as a server and then an Android connecting to it over an IP address over a little Wi-Fi network between the two to control the remote control land cruiser and then I'll do like all sorts of steering commands acceleration commands stuff like that so anyway that concludes this tutorial thanks for watching